Before starting the stability test, it is important to plan ahead and prepare. There are some items you will need, such as stability test form and plaque, a pen or pencil, a flat surface to do the testing area, a known weight, measuring tape, a level, a protractor, or similar devices to these. Every Lipmore crane comes with an owner's manual and installation instructions. In these documents, we provide a stability test form, as seen here. This form should be used to record the results so that you can transfer the data to the stability test decal plaque that is also provided with every Lipmore crane. You can go ahead and complete the vehicle and crane information on the top of the form. In this video, we will be using a Lipmore 6036X20 WP crane. However, the process is similar for all Lipmore cranes. Complete these sections and the next step is to determine your testing load radius. In order to determine the testing load radius, you will need a known weight. The known weight can be actual weights, heavy equipment, or custom weights such as 55 gallon drums filled with concrete. However, it is critical to know the weight of these items and that may require using a scale to confirm the weights if there is any uncertainty. The known weight consists of the actual weight itself the crane travel block, which has a sticker noting the weight, and any rigging being used. In the section of the form, titled Determining the Testing Load Radius, you will notice that we are using a 1.18 multiplier. This is because regulation requires that the crane be tested at 18% over its max capacity. In this example, we are using a crane with a 36,000 foot-pound moment rating. When we multiply 36,000 foot-pounds by 1.18, it gives us 42,480 foot-pounds. This is the moment we need to achieve in order to complete the test. We are using a known weight of 3,060 pounds. If we divide 42,480 foot-pounds by 3,060 pounds, this gives us 13.9 feet. This is going to be our testing load radius. You can input your testing load radius onto the form now that it has been determined. Now that we have completed the first two sections of the stability test form, it is time to begin the test. Before making any lift, inspect the testing surface and surrounding areas. Make sure you are clear of any obstructions or safety hazards. Be sure to fully engage the parking brake. It is time to adjust the outriggers. You can use a level on the back of the truck or the bumper and adjust the outriggers to make sure that the truck is as level as possible. Outriggers or jack stands must be fully deployed while testing. Next, you'll measure your load radius and be sure to mark it on the testing surface. In our example, we got 13.9 feet, so we will measure 13.9 feet, a straight line from the center of the crane's rotation to the center of the load, which is typically the hook. We mark it with tape on the ground. To center the known weight over the load radius marking that you just made, we advise that you start lifting with your load closest to the crane. You'll move the load out to your testing load radius slowly. You will notice that as you lift the load, boom deflection occurs, which could increase your load radius. Having the load already raised and moving it to your testing load radius will ensure that you are testing at the correct distance. Once your known weight is at the testing load radius mark, Make sure that you are directly off the rear of the truck at the zero degree position. You are now ready to start rotating the load counterclockwise and determine your area W1 length and area Y as specified on the stability test form. Only use rotation. Do not use boom elevation or boom extension as this will change the testing load radius. There may be a time to use these functions, such as when tipping occurs, but we will get to that part later. 
As you are rotating the load, be sure to keep the load no more than four inches off the ground at all times, and never drag the load on the ground. This may require using the hoist to raise and lower the load as needed, but only use the hoist and not the boom elevation or boom extension. Continue to rotate the load as slowly as possible, paying close attention to the tires of the vehicle. Tipping occurs when any tire comes off the ground, even just a hair. You will possibly see the outriggers come off the ground, and this is okay. Continue to rotate the crane if the tires remain in contact with the ground, and rotate all the way as close to the cab as possible without coming in contact to the truck. If no tipping occurs, and no tires came off the ground, then your area W1 length should not have changed. You can enter the length onto the form. Since we started at 13.9 feet in our example, and there was no change in load radius, our area W1 length will remain the same as the testing load radius. On the bottom of the form, in the section titled Stability Test Results, we input 180 degrees for area Y. This means that the crane can lift 100% of its capacity in all 180 degrees for this side of the truck. Now, what happens if tipping occurs and a tire comes off the ground? If any tire breaks contact with the ground, you must stop rotating immediately. Lower the load using hoist down only. Now you need to determine the angle of the crane from the zero degree position to where the crane was when the tires came off the ground. This is where a protractor comes in handy. Using a protractor, measure the angle as seen here and record that number as it will be used later. We will need to continue rotating the load, but we will have to reduce the load radius so that the tires remain in contact with the ground. Using a combination of hoist up and boom elevation up, raise the load off the ground. By raising the load with the boom elevation up, you are reducing the load radius and therefore reducing the stress on the crane and truck. Do this until the load is suspended and all tires remain in contact with the ground. Essentially, you're bringing the load closer to the truck. Once this is achieved and the tire touches the ground, you can continue rotating counterclockwise. If the tire comes off the ground again, use the same technique to reduce the load radius. That is, use boom up to reduce the load radius until the tires are back on the ground. You'll continue rotating until the load is made 180 degrees of rotation, or is as close as possible without coming in contact to the truck. And then you will lower the load at the final position. Since tipping occurred, we now have a shorter load radius than we started with. Measure your new load radius and record this number onto the form for area W1 length. In our example, we input 75 degrees where tipping occurred into our stability test results. You have now completed the first half of the test and you must complete the same process on the driver's side of the vehicle and determine the area W2 length and area Z. Return the weight to the testing load radius at zero degree position, just like before. Keep the load no more than four inches off the ground. Begin rotating clockwise. Watch for any tipping and keep a close eye on all the tires of the vehicle. Record the data just like you did before. When completed, return the load back to the starting point or to an area away from the cab. Transfer all the data to the stability test form as seen in this example. You now have all the data required to complete the form. Using the instructions provided, calculate the final results on the stability test form. You will notice that one example had no tipping, and the crane was able to lift 100% of its capacity around the entire vehicle, or 180 degrees on both sides. In the second example, where tipping occurred, you will notice that the crane can lift 100% of its capacity for only 75 degrees, and then it's derated to 90% of its capacity beyond that 75 degrees within area W1. Be sure to sign and date the form. Keep this form with your records for future reference. Using the stability test decal that came with the crane, as seen here, transfer the data onto the decal plaque and place it inside the compartment door next to the load chart. Congratulations, you have finished a stability test.